In this video, we will talk about two important principles in fluid mechanics, the Pascal's Law and Archimedes' Principle. First, we will talk about Pascal's Law, which deals with transmission of pressure in fluids. We will then discuss Archimedes' Principle, associated with buoyant force and upward force on an object immersed in a fluid. And finally, we will solve a few problems based on these concepts. Let's begin with the definition of Pascal's Law. Pascal's Law states the following. Pressure applied to an enclosed fluid is transmitted undiminished to every portion of the fluid and the walls of the container. So the word undiminished captures the essence of Pascal's Law, as we shall see next. To understand Pascal's law, let's look at the following arrangement. You have a U-shaped tube with different cross section on the left and the right. And this tube or container contains some fluid. It can be oil, it can be water, some kind of fluid. On the left arm and on the right arm of this tube, you have pistons of two different sizes. The piston on the left is narrower and has an surface area A1 which is less than the surface area of the piston on the right, namely A2. Now let's assume I exert a force F1 on piston on the left arm of this arrangement in a direction shown. I push the left piston with a downward force of F1. This in turn will exert a pressure P with a value of F1 over A1 on this piston. So this pressure P will then transmit it through the liquid as shown undiminished all the way to the second piston like that. So since the pressure is transmitted undiminished to the second piston, the amount of pressure that's being exerted on the second piston is still P and it is given in terms of new force and new surface area, namely F2 over A2. So there is a different force now acting on the second piston in an upward direction. We know the value is now F2, which is different from F1, because now the surface area is A2, which is different from A1. Equating these two terms, we get the following, F1 over A1, equals F2 over A2. So this equation is the result of undiminished transmission of pressure from the left arm to the right arm. Now let's assume F1 is 10 newtons and the surface area of piston 1 is a quarter meter squared and the surface area of the second piston is 4 meters squared. So what is F2? So the simple exercise will give the value of F2 as F1 over A1 times A2. Since F1 is 10, A1 is a quarter and A2 is 4, you end up with a value of 160 newtons for F2. What this example is showing is Pascal's law can be used in a hydraulic arrangement to magnify a force. One such example of such an arrangement is the hydraulic lever. Next, let's look at Archimedes' principle. But before we move into the details of Archimedes' principle, we need to understand buoyant force, which is a crucial ingredient in Archimedes' principle. So buoyant force essentially is an upward force that acts on an object immersed in a fluid. Now what does that mean? Let's say you have an object, this object right here, and this object is immersed in a liquid. Now it can be fully immersed or partially immersed, it does not matter. Now, free body diagram states there must be the weight of this object, let's call it W, and there is an upward force, and this is the force that we called the buoyant force. 
imposed by the liquid on the object. Now let's say the buoyant force equals the weight of the object. Now what happens is the object will simply float, say like that. So it will just float because the two forces balance each other out. Now if the weight of the object is greater than the upward buoyant force, then obviously the object would sink further. And that means there is a net force in a downward direction. Now this net force is given by the weight of the object minus the buoyant force. So this net force is sometimes known as the weight of object in liquid, which is obviously less than the true weight of the object W. So if you are asked to compute the weight of object in, let's say, some kind of liquid in which the object is in, all you have to do is to subtract the buoyant force from the true weight of the object. Of course, we can measure the buoyant force in the laboratory in the following way. So what do you have here? You have a scale. So you hang the a mass from the scale. The weight of the mass is mg, and you read the reading on the scale. So the reading is w, that is the true weight of this object. Next, you hang the same object in a liquid. And the reading on the scale now will be the apparent weight or the weight of the object in that liquid. Now by taking the difference of the two, the true weight minus the apparent weight or the weight in the liquid, you will be able to calculate the buoyant force on this object inside that liquid. Having understood what buoyant force is, now let's describe Archimedes' principle in detail. Archimedes' principle says the buoyant force on an object in a liquid is given by the weight of fluid displaced by that object or by that body. So it's given by the mass of the fluid displaced times the gravitational acceleration. Let's explain this further. You have a container with liquid inside and the initial volume of this liquid is V0. Now if I place an object inside the liquid, obviously the volume of the liquid will go up. Let's call it Vi. Of course, the difference between the initial volume and the final volume of the liquid is known as the volume of the fluid or liquid displaced by this object. And it should be the same as the volume of the object. So to determine the mass of the liquid displaced by the object, all we have to do is to take that volume of the object and you multiply by the density of the liquid from the equation density equals mass over volume. So the weight of the liquid displaced is quite simply the mass of the liquid displaced times gravity or in this case the volume of the object, the density of the liquid times gravity or gravitational acceleration. So what Archimedes principle says this weight of the liquid displaced by this object is the buoyant force acting on the object. So that is the essence of Archimedes' principle. So in the case that if you have an object which is partially immersed in a liquid, then the buoyant force is given by the mass of the fluid or the liquid displaced times gravity. And according to the equation that we have just written down, it is given by the density of the liquid times gravity times the volume of the object below the liquid surface, which means this portion of that volume of the object. Let's do a problem. The first problem is on Pascal's law. The left-hand side piston area is 1 meter squared, that's here, and the right-hand side piston has an area of 16 meters squared. 
calculate the mass m, that is this mass m here, that compresses the spring on the right by 4 centimeters. The spring constant is 2 times 10 to the power 4 newton per meter, and the spring is at its relaxed length initially. So what happens is that the weight of this mass will push on this piston and creates a pressure that will be transmitted undiminished all the way to the second piston, which in turn creates this upward force that compresses this spring by 4 centimeters. So the pressure created by this weight pressing down on the smaller piston is PL, and that we can calculate is just the weight of that mass, mg, over the surface area, which is 1. We know that it's given. And the pressure transmitted undiminished to the wider piston, and that pressure is, let's call it P sub R. It's given by the force, in this case the spring force, because it creates an upward force that compresses the spring. So that force essentially is the same as the spring force Kx over the surface area, which is 16 meters squared. Now we know that these two for, uh, pressures must be the same. So by equating the two terms, mass times gravity equals the spring constant, which is 2 times 10 to the power 4. The compression is 4 centimeters, so 0 0.04 over 16. And you can determine the mass. And it will give you 5.1 kg for that mass m. And that solves the problem. Problem 2 on Archimedes' principle. A block of wood floats in water with 60% of its volume submerged. The same wood floats in oil with 90% of its volume submerged. What is the density of the wood and oil? Let the density of water to be 1000 kg per cubic meter. So let's look at the water case first. So the volume below is 60% of the entire volume of the wood. So we know the mass of the wood times gravity, that's the weight of the wood, equals the buoyant force on the wood in water. And that is given by the mass of the water that is displaced by that 60% volume of wood times gravity. So the mass of the water displaced is quite simply equals the volume of the water displaced, which is the volume of the wood below the surface of the water, which is 60% of its entire volume, times the density of the water times g. So the g will cancel, giving us the following equation. The mass of the wood equals 0 0.6 times the total volume of the wood times the density of water. Let's call this equation equation 1. Now we repeat the same analysis for oil. So the Wood floats in oil with 90% of its volume submerged. So again, the weight of the wood equals the buoyant force in oil. Let's call it FBO. So mass of the oil displaced times gravity. Mass of the oil displaced is the volume of the oil displaced, which is essentially the volume of the wood beneath the oil surface, times the density of oil times gravity. Gravity cancels, giving you the second equation. So mass of wood equals 0 0.9 times the volume of wood times the density of oil. So that is equation 2. Let's determine the density of oil first. By equating equation 1 and 2, you will get 0 0.6 volume of wood density of water equals 0 0.9 volume of wood density of oil. So volume will cancel. The density of oil will simply become 0 0.6 times the density of water over 0 0.9. Density of water is 1000, and you can compute the density of oil to be 667 kg per cubic meter. Now let's calculate the density of wood. Density of wood equals the mass of wood over the volume of wood. Now we can use equation 1 or 2 to do this calculation. Let's use equation 1. So from equation 1, m over v is... 0 0.6 times density of water, and that's going to give you 600 kg per cubic meter. And that solves the problem.
Thank you for watching.